What is going on, you stallions and stallionettes? AK40 Kevin here in the gamer heaven. Sony is being sued in a class action lawsuit, and rightfully so, a absolute metric S ton of DualSense 5 controllers are coming out of the box, either out of the console bundle or the box of a separate DualSense 5 controller with stick drift. A lot of stick drift, and they're not repairing or replacing them. Let's talk about it. Alrighty guys, so share my screen here. This article is trending right now. There is a bunch of these articles around. This one here is from PC Gamer, even CNN. So like even CNN Business is getting in on this action here. I am going to skim over what they have to say here. I have read the articles in their entirety. They will be linked in the description below as I do always cite my sources anytime I go over any news or any kind of uh, topic where I refer to any material. So first of all, I want to say in 2021, Stick drift should not be as big of an issue as it is. It is ridiculous. We suffered greatly from it with the previous generation PS4 and Xbox One. Nintendo Switch is nefarious for having their Joy-Cons drift all over the dang screen, Tokyo Drift style. And then now it's gotten to the point with DualSense 5 controllers already just a few months after launch to where a class action lawsuit. There's that many people suffering from this to where they're actually taking legal litigation here to get their money back from Sony because Sony not only is not refunding these people, the repair process, the owner has to pay out of pocket to ship it to them, which it's not their fault that their controllers are stick drifting. Yes, a couple of them might have been rage throwed during a match or something like that, but not all of these are the consumers, the average electronic consumers problem. It's the manufacturer's fault. Now, I'm going to make a separate video. Sony and PlayStation 5 have some serious, serious issues that I want to go over, like five or six of them that are so bad that I borderline feel bad for people that got their hands on a PS5 already. Before you guys go out there and start saying I'm blue bashing or I'm a Sony hater or I'm a Microsoft fanboy or anything like that, I have no affinity to any brand, but I will say that I grew up playing Sony PlayStation 1 and 2. I have owned every single generation of PlayStation from 1 all the way until, well, the 5. Haven't got my hands on that bad boy yet. Be probably because I stopped trying completely about a month and a half ago. I have the entire PlayStation 1 library on my uh, retro console. I had a jailbroken PSP for a while, a Vita. Um, so obviously I'm no stranger to Sony's products and I continue to spend my hard-earned money on them because at their core, they are good. They have great exclusives and overall their controller design's pretty good as well. But stick drift guys, stick drift here, that's a problem. And a problem that shouldn't be present in this new of a console. Now, a lot of these controllers that are having issues are the one controller that's included when you get that console. They don't come out looking like this. This one's been customized on this channel by yours truly here, Hydro Dipped and all that stuff. But anyway, that video is linked in the description below. Controllers should not be coming out of the box. The one controller you get with astronomical stick drift. And the ones that didn't have it initially, a lot of these people in the lawsuit are saying that it started uh, sh very shortly after. So weeks to a month after uh, just regular usage. And that's absolutely ridiculous. Keep in mind, these are $70 controllers plus tax. You're looking at about $73 out the door if you buy them on Amazon or Walmart uh, or anything like that, which they are fully in stock there, guys. You can get extra controllers. You just can't get the actual consoles. So the controller itself is really good. It's extremely ergonomically comfortable. In fact, I've been using it on my PC whenever I do play, uh, games that require or feel more comfortable with a controller like Grand Theft Auto. Uh, it feels ergonomically great. It does have those adaptive triggers and those haptic feedback motors, as well as a very handsome design. But well, the white's not really handsome, but you know, get it in the hands of a customizer and you know, she'll be looking good for you. But the fact that it has stick drift, and this isn't for a dozen people, this isn't for a couple hundred, this is for over a thousand people. And think about that, there's not that many actual real consumers that have their hands on consoles, so that's a good percentage of them. As of now, we do not have an exact percentage, but I would assume it's probably about 5 to 10, that's my guess, considering there isn't a lot of people that literally have a PS5 right now, and there's... Uh, well over a thousand claims on this class action lawsuit. So, so it says being a class action lawsuit, any U S citizen who felt the pain of supposedly defective controllers, I don't know why they had that in quotes. It is defective can raise the stakes of the case by adding their evidence to the claim. 
So send a little clip, a 30 second clip of you holding your controller in, in your in front of your screen with your character looking around and whatnot. All right, and then if we come over here to the CNN business article over here, a class action lawsuit against Sony SNE, that's their ticker symbol, by the way, of violating consumer fraud statutes and breaching warranty agreements because they're not replacing them. Uh, they're telling you, you, you can send it out to us. And here's what they're doing. Here's what they're doing. They're slapping a Band-Aid on the problem. They are doing a half-ass fix. They're not, they're not sending you a brand new controller. They are not desoldering the board or printed circuit board and changing out the thumbstick module. That's something that, that's something that I have experience with having a small business customizing controllers. I've soldered out thumbstick modules before. It's not too difficult. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's not too difficult. They're not even doing that. What they're doing is either sending you a already pre-refurbished controller or they're just wiggling around the thumbsticks, maybe cleaning them off with a little bit of, uh, you know, IPA, a little isopropyl alcohol, and then testing it for five minutes and sending it back to you. And then these people are like playing with it for a week and they're like, oh, okay, the stick drifts back. Great. Then they contact Sony again and they're like, well, you've already cashed in your warranty, so you cannot do it again. Or they just blatantly tell them, okay, we'll do it, but you have to s ship the controller to us, which... Why would you have to pay for shipping? They should give you a prepaid return label, just like you do when you get an Amazon return. They send you a UP, uh, UPS prepaid label you can print out and stick to the box, or um, UPS will actually bring it to your door in sticker form and you stick it on the box. Why can't they just do that? So the fact that we're still, still dealing with that, this stick drift issue with this new generation of consoles this early is a problem, especially considering it's the $70 DualSense. I have heard personally zero complaints from the Series S and X, and that is a $60 controller. However, they were running sales for the longest time. Uh, I think during Black Friday, I scooped up like three or four of them for $40. Why are you asking? Why would I uh, want to have three or four of them? Like I said, I have a small business customizing controller, so I'm probably going to hydro dip those ones, maybe put in some trigger locks, some paddles. The $60 Xbox controllers aren't having an issue from what I've heard in the Reddit forums, uh, Twitter, Facebook. YouTube, Twitch, it's not being talked about. The DualSense is. I'm hearing a lot of complaints about it. Um, personally, I have not experienced stick drift primarily because, again, I don't have a PS5, so I've been playing this on PC. So I've played probably about maybe 10 hours with it, which probably isn't enough to activate that stick drift yet. But what Sony needs to do is stop wasting their time trying to sue D brands for making custom side plates for their console. They need to work on their major underlying issues instead of wasting their time with frivolous bullshit. For example, there's an empty slot in the back of your console you can do nothing with. You have 677 gigs of usable storage. There's a slot for an NVMe expansion, but you can't use anything in there and they have not produced anything yet. The user interface is buggy and glitchy as all can get out. There are issues with game Games up resing for the new generation, so playing your older titles that were on PS4, they're not being as fluidly updated to the higher frame rate and the controller features, you know, adaptive trigger, haptic feedback, that you're supposed to just naturally get by playing the newer version of that game. You can't use an external hard drive because if you turn off your PS5 or put it into sleep mode, it corrupts the drive and they haven't fixed that issue yet. 30% of the PS5 consoles have louder coil whine or fan noise than the other consoles, like noticeably kind of noisy. They have minimal exclusives out right now, more than Xbox, but still not enough to keep people engaged. The onboard Wi-Fi card is not consistent. People are dropping downloads and getting crazy ping. And most importantly, there is a huge lack of stock still, which is driving this huge scalper issue. So there are scalpers that are using bots and scripts. For example, Crep Chief Notify in the U UK has 3,500 units of PS5s. That's more than the major vendors, Walmart, Target, Amazon, Best Buy, Newegg, etc. That's a huge problem and it's ongoing. And every time there's a new drop on PlayStation Direct, on GameStop, on Target, on Walmart, I was covering it at first when the console first came out. But then I lost interest in it because people that I was trying to give the heads up to Literally nobody was reporting back that they got consoles. I was unable to get one myself. And then finally, after about the third or fourth week, I literally gave up. I now have a 3080 graphics card, which out games the titties off of PlayStation. And I have an Xbox Series S, which is a tremendous value and does play games at 120 with a SSD for those lightning fast load times. And I do still have my PS4. If I, if I get a hankering for some Uncharted or some uh, God of War or Spider-Man or something like that, which spoiler alert, I don't. I usually am on PC playing like Call of Duty. But I just can't believe how poorly Sony is handling the situation. Instead of working on their major issues, they're dicking back and forth with D-brand over side plates, accessories that they don't even produce, and 
and and and don't want their console customized. I made a video about this the other day. It's just ridiculous. Instead of focusing on their major underlying issues that I just mentioned a second ago, the console was not perfect, and all of this leads up to the fact that this console was not ready for launch. The Xbox Series S and X and the PlayStation 5 should have waited until about mid or spring of 21. They would have had more stock available. They would have had a smoother launch. The scalping issue would have been less. It would have been, it would have still happened because scalpers are assholes. They eat, breathe shit and come people's misery and tears. So that's what they, they drive off of. That's what they drive off of, but it would have been much smoother and PlayStation probably would have had an SSD expansion, which by the way, Xbox launched with the series S and X granted it's expensive. There is a one terabyte Seagate expandable slot that you plug in the back of your console and it gives you an extra terabyte of storage that was available at launch. PlayStation still doesn't have that. So yeah, just absolutely ridiculous how poorly Sony's handling this instead of them realizing, recognizing, and admitting the problem, kind of like CD Projekt Red did with Cyberpunk, where they did that announcement uh, about three weeks ago now, where they blatantly, or they, uh, they upfront apologized. They were genuinely apologizing and then said, this is how we're going to make it better going forward. Sony hasn't done anything like that. They're just like, well, you managed to get a uh, $500 console from us, you dumb fuck. Here's a... Uh Here's a busted controller. It's pretty unacceptable. I can understand why there's a class action lawsuit about this. Granted, nobody's getting physically hurt unless the controllers are exploding in their hands like a Galaxy Note 5 and, you know, bending their fingers back like the guy from Scary Movie 2. But it's still frustrating when you you spent that much money on a console. Maybe you only have one controller. You don't have an extra 70 bucks for a, another controller. And you have to wait two weeks and pay to ship it to them get it repaired with a band-aid and then come back to you just to have the issue happen again in a couple weeks and repeat the process. That's not acceptable guys. That's, that's really not. All right, guys, drop in the comment section below. If you own a DualSense 5 and you have suffered from these horrific events here from Sony, um, even if you don't own a PS5, maybe you just bought a individual DualSense to tinker with it, disassemble it, customize it, use it on PC. They do work great in steam big picture. I'll tell you that. And, uh, yeah, I want to hear if any of my community here has it suffered from this because I have a feeling, probably a couple of you, your character, he's aiming all over the place and you ain't even touching that controller. All right, guys. Peace. Crying shame, crying shame.